So I didn't talk too much about the storyline just because there's so much to these games. But basically, Fantasy Star 1 is a revenge story. It's about Alice, you know, taking revenge for her brother against Elastic. Number 2 is basically about two friends venturing off into the world and finding out what the true evil was, which is Mother Brain. Number 3 it's basically about your character getting married and going through the game and to find out that you're on a gigantic spaceship. That's kind of number three in a nutshell. Number four is basically, you know, it's called the end of the millennium. It kind of sums up all these games, all the plot holes and all that. It sums it up and gives you a, you know, a fantastic ending against Dark Force. So that's the, you know, one to four is the original series. Now, Basically, the series was over. There was no Fantasy Star 5. Ba 4 summed it all up. And we didn't get anything until Fantasy Star Online. Now, what's interesting about Fantasy Star Online, it's very, very different than the original games. It's more an action RPG. And obviously, you play the game online with, you know, up to three other players. But it was really great. I got really addicted to this game. I, I spent hundreds, hundreds of hours playing this. I'm Embarrassed to admit that, but I really got, it was actually one of the first online games I ever played, and I really got suckered in. It was cool, it was originally released on the Dreamcast, and then we got on the Dreamcast, we got version 2, I actually imported that, I was playing you know, on all the Japanese servers at the time, and then we got episodes 1 and 2 on the GameCube, and then we got you know episodes uh, 1 and 2 plus on the GameCube, and that was the original Fantasy Star Online, and it was a big hit, it was awesome, a really great game. Very different than the previous games though. Fantasy Star Online was a very unique game. Obviously, as I said, it was an online game. So, you actually needed one of these. A keyboard. And this was the Dreamcast keyboard that uh, you know was released by Sega. And it's the first keyboard that I actually used for a console. And it's kind of nostalgic for me to, to look back on. I actually had to clean this up. It was in the back of a closet somewhere. I think this is where everybody's Dreamcast keyboard is in the back of a closet somewhere. So it was really cool at the time to be able to sit and chat with your friends while you were playing a console game. And Fantasy Star Online really was groundbreaking in that regard. It was one of the very first console RPGs that was online. So I get asked a lot about this particular item. And I thought I'd actually do an unboxing and show you guys what it looks like and what it's all about. And it's a very rare item. I mentioned it in my, you know, cool th video game stuff I own video, but it is the GameCube Fantasy Star controller uh, slash keyboard. So this is a very unique item. I bought it when I imported uh, Fantasy Star Online episodes one and two. So I thought I'd open it up for you guys to show you what it looked like. So I haven't taken this out in a very, very long time, but what a unique design for a controller slash keyboard. I remember when I first saw this, uh, I had to import it. I had to have it day one. And thank God that I did, because when episode one and two came out over here in the US, it did not have the keyboard. You could not get the keyboard unless you imported it. So uh, everybody in the US bought the game, but there was no keyboard for the game. You couldn't buy a keyboard for in this country. So you had to import it. This made this go up in price on eBay. This I remember it going for like $175 at one time. And then I remember somebody created an adapter for the Dreamcast keyboard. So you could actually use that on the uh, GameCube. But that wasn't perfect if I remember right. But and that, I remember that adapter was going for an outrageous amount of money. But US fans of Fantasy Star Online Episodes 1 and 2 on the GameCube royally got screwed. Nobody got this keyboard. So it was really frustrating for other players that I could actually type to all of them, they couldn't type back. They could only do shortcuts to talk back to me. That was really, really frustrating for them. So Fantasy Star Online does tie into the rest of the series. There's a lot of similar items. Uh, they use a similar currency in the game as well. So it did tie in. A lot of plot developments are very spookily the same. Some uh, echoing back to number three, uh, Fantasy Star 3. It's very unusual that with the world shifts. The Xbox got a version of PSO as well. Then on the GameCube came Fantasy Star Online Episode 3 Card Revolution. An online card battle game where you could fight other players using monsters and characters from PSO. Now, it's an interesting game, but it wasn't my favorite in the series by any means. It was a very big departure 
from Vanity Star because all of a sudden we're playing basically a card battle game. So not my favorite in this series, but I know it was quite popular with players online. Then in 2004, there came Fantasy Star Online Blue Burst. Now this was released only for the PC, and it's basically like episodes one and two, with a lot of additional content, uh, different levels and such. A very interesting game. And a few years ago, we actually got a sequel to Fantasy Star Online, which was Fantasy Star Universe. And I hate to be a negative person, but I, I played a lot of this game. I played a few hundred hours. And I wanted it, I didn't enjoy it as much as Fantasy Star Online. And I think that's to do with Sonic Team had changed, and Yuji Naka had kind of moved on to different things, and the direction of Fantasy Star Universe uh, went in a direction I wasn't really a big fan of. It's, it really is a similar type of game. There's no problem with that. There's a lot more worlds, there's a lot more to do. But I, maybe I just, it, it hit me in the wrong uh, time uh, period or something, because I just couldn't get into it the same as I did Fantasy Star Online. And recently, just when I always think that Fantasy Star is, you know, it, maybe that was the last game, we're not going to get any more, we got Fantasy Star Portable, which is basically Fantasy Star Universe on uh, the PSP, which is a really cool game. Rob Man actually got me that in uh, the Christmas special. He actually uh, gave that to me uh, last Christmas, which is really awesome. And also, coming down the pipes, uh, there's Fantasy Star Zero on the DS, and I'm really looking forward to that. I'll definitely be reviewing that when it comes out. There's a couple of Fantasy Star games that I don't own that I didn't actually mention, but I'm going to mention them now. Uh, there was Fantasy Star Gaiden and Fantasy Star Adventure, and they were on the Sega Game Gear. Also, there was a Fantasy Star 2 text adventure game we never got, and that was on the Sega modem service in Japan, so we never got that either. So I just wanted to mention some of the other Fantasy Star games we never got over here. Here's one. This was actually supposed to come over here by a small company who was going to translate it, and they never did, and that is by Sega Ages, it's a remake of Fantasy Star 1. Also, we never got this one either, it's a remake of Fantasy Star 2. Also, Sega Ages Volume 32, and this is Fantasy Star, the complete collection. It has all the games, all the artwork on here, it's a must-have for fans. Yeah, all these games are on the PlayStation too, in Japan. And obviously, another game we never got is Fantasy Star Collection on the Sega Saturn, only for Japan. Now what was really great about this at the time was it actually has the original uh, television commercials for the games on here. So if any of you guys want to check out the original four games in the series, you can actually get them on Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection by Sega, right here. Uh, you can get this on the 360 and on the PS3. So guys, I know there was a lot of games, there was too much information to cover, I'm sure I missed quite a few things, but what this video was supposed to be was for myself looking back on the Fantasy Star series. It's wonderful to actually look back on this entire series of games that I've been playing basically my whole life. And it's wonderful. I love the Fantasy Star series, and I really thank Sega for you know creating this franchise. And it's never been as big as, say, a Final Fantasy over here, but to me it's equally as important, and it's a wonderful, wonderful series. Definitely check out some of the games if you haven't tried them out before. Great, great series. Anyways, guys, until next time.